is the second time I've been down here to Matthew Brady's place. He bought my old mill, and we'll have some B-roll of that first visit. Matthew Brady, the proud owner of this monstrosity. We've looked it all over. He's got a good start in setting this thing up. He's going to fire it up, run the carriage back and forth, but he's got a lot of projects before he actually does any serious milling. He wasn't completely set up at that point. He was just uh, moving ahead as best he could, but he's got it in really good shape right now. Matthew, you went to school with one of my boys, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that was between both Nate and Adam. So. Yeah. Yeah, so this, this young man went to school with my boys, and I, in fact, pulled this mill up onto the Forest Service soon after I had built it and sawed some logs on a project that your dad was sort of administering. Up there at Steamboat, yeah. That's right. That's right. So I'm not exactly sure what his dad thought when Matthew circled back around and bought this thing from, I think, the third party who had owned it since I sold it. But we're going to go through this, and he's going to start it up, and he's going to run it, and we're going to talk about some of the kinks that he's working out and some of the some of the progress he's made. But I've got to tell you, it's not easy to make a 50 inch diameter circle saw stand up and cut. And he's doing darn good to have made all the progress that he's made. So we're going to look it over and here in just a few minutes, we'll start it up. It's hard to even describe um, what it's like to be leaning up against this machine now. What, I just turned 64 two days ago. So it was 43 years ago that I started building it. It is gratifying beyond description to have Matthew take such an interest and have the mechanical ability and a sight and the equipment and he knows how to use a chainsaw and so it's, it's just really gratifying to have it in a place now where essentially it belongs. He's made a few adaptations, he made a guard removable, he's got there's some protection. He's a little more safety conscious and could afford to be a little more safety conscious than I was or could be then. He's got some grading for walking on. He's got the blower working. We've got a Chevy 350 on here instead of a 292. And on the face of it, that's a better deal. We haven't started it yet. The motor screams. What? How many RPM do you think you're running? Uh, probably 3,500. 3,500. It's cooking. And I had that 292 running 3,600. And it was right on the edge of flying apart. But it's, it's a balancing act between RPM, power band, transmission, the gearing from the... Oh, you're right. That's a flimsy connection. All right, the gearing from the transmission to the jack shaft to the arbor in order to end up with 650 RPMs, and it's all important. So, you didn't click this video to watch me talk about my old mill. You clicked this video to watch my old mill run. So we're going to start this thing up. I'm going to film while he makes a few boards, and uh, I wish you could see and feel and experience what it feels like to be on this hillside with this equipment on a beautiful early spring day making boards out of Douglas fir which after all, is what Douglas fir is best suited for. So this is a governor off a hay hammer. And I had actually installed that, had help installing it on the 292. It's a pretty sexy little thing and he's got it wired in there so it's working. This cable runs over through a couple little pulleys to this lever right here. So when he steps on this lever, that kicks it loose, so the governor takes control of the RPMs, and he can pull the governor down to an idle right there. That's a very handy touch. He's going to fire it up, and we are going to make some sawdust.
So what you just watched him do is put in a taper block. There's about three inches of taper between the butt, which is forward, and the top, which is back. And so we put about an inch and a half block between the log and the knee so that about half the taper comes out on each side of the log. Your opening face determines the yield and the quality of the lumber that you're going to get out of the whole project. So that scale shows he's at 15, 14. He's going to cut a line at about 14 and a third. right here where the tail of the saw dragging as he came back, not bad. Saw's running good. That's a heavy slab. A strong boy. satisfying part of the whole thing just cranking boards out just edging. so when you get this tuned up you edge both those cans at once it's awesome yeah those they just go plop there's two plop there's two two back stands come off and and when this thing's tuning so come come over here and look at this that is about the rate of feed that you should be able okay. to experience even on like a nine inch cut a eight or nine inch cut mm -hmm. is pretty, kind of an optimum. Nobody wants to be able to feed at maximum feed rate on a 16 inch face. You just can't do it. Yeah. At least we can't with this technology. But but you should be able to get to where you can edge and be getting, you That's know. What, almost two inches, inch and three quarter, inch and a half. Yeah, right? you're getting a 60, 330 seconds to an eighth of an inch per tooth. Yeah, you know. And, and that that'll make, should make a little gr more gravelly sawdust out there there'll be some of it from edging this but see that, that's just right there's an eighth there's an eighth there's an eighth that brrr, right on down there so what kind of a transmission is that uh it's a four-speed transmission pickup. chevy half ton pickup okay uh, and sure. you're running a which gear so running the second gear so have tried it in third gear and then just way below the power band on the engine i mean it'll turn it but it won't make a cut that keeps the rpm up so. have you tried it in low gear uh, no, I don't think it'd make it. In, I don't you, think you it'd make it. The rim speed. I don't think you could make it uh, the rim speed in first gear. Have you, have you clocked your arbor to see what you're getting? Yeah, the. I mean, it's it's got a tack on the arbor itself. On they, the arbor. They've got a little magnet on there, and then there's a pickup sensor. And that's there's a little wire here that runs underneath and runs runs that. And mm -hmm. I've run it with a hand tack, and it's. Right at six and a half. Yeah, close enough for. Have you got? Have you had anybody watching it when you're in a cut and see what you're dropping down? Yeah, to? I've watched it, and it'll drop down. You know, I try and keep it like above six hundred, but uh -huh. sometimes it'll go. Yeah. When I've been fighting it, it's been down to four hundred and stuff, and that yeah. that's frustrating to sure. say the least. Sure. 
So have you ever stuck the saw on a cut and and the motor keep running? No, I've killed it outright though. I've okay. killed the motor outright. So that little 292, I could stick the saw on a cut and it would keep pushing it. Really? Yeah. So it was a manual then running, or it was it automatic? It was a manual. So it's three, just, three on the tree in low gear. And it would slip the main clutch on that, or it would slip right these V-belts? The V-belts. Oh. And the, so all I can talk about is my experience. So that 292, I think, made 110 or 20 horse at top power curve. Mm -hmm. But I, those belts were only holding 15 horse apiece. So one, two, three, four, five. The max you're going to get is 75 horse. Um, that 350 makes a ton of horsepower. Yeah, should, should make at least 250 easy. Yeah, stock. so in some way, you're still not getting the power of your motor onto your saw. In some way, and I don't know what it is. So at some point, probably buy a new set of belts. And yeah, yeah, or, or just add to it. Or they make them power banded where they're tied mm -hmm. together on the back. Yeah. But if you had, if you had uh, eight or nine belts on there, that 350 ought to smoke through this. But so what? You're making lumber. Yeah. So his his accuracy here is good. Um, the, the width is within an eighth or less. The thickness varies a little, but not much. I mean, it's right there. His accuracy is doing good. I can't tell you. I keep saying that, but I can't. But I'm impressed that, that uh, a millennial, you're a millennial, right? I am. That a millennial has figured this stuff out. Does that make some of you mad? It shouldn't, um, but he's figuring some stuff out. He's got a weak point right here that's going to fail him. You know the connection from the jack shaft to the back of the yoke on the transmission. And, but and it has. It has twice already. <laughs> so yeah, a machinist somewhere will figure out a way to make that better. But but this is working. You're making boards. The clutch is very controllable. Where's your gas? Oh, it's in front. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just got a boat tank to yeah. run it off of. Flips on and off. So what other changes, if any, are you thinking of making here? Or are you just going to run it like this? Probably just run it like this for a while. The rear mainsail on that engine's leaking. and Okay, that'll drive drip, change eventually. Drip, 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 drip on the exhaust, which is no big deal to me. But yeah. It needs fixed eventually. But, uh, but yeah, like you said, probably putting some more decking on it. Yeah, out here on the outfeed yeah. side. Get things just workflow set up a little bit better as far as off bearing and yeah. getting rid of slabs. Yeah. Kind of cramped for space on the side of the hill here, but it was a good oh, it's a right good spot. ready built spot with this old log load spot here. It's excellent. All right, well that is Matthew Brady's Lumber Company in action. And it is uh, a blessing to me to have it end up somewhere where it belonged, perhaps from the beginning. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.